A homogeneous system of equations is a set of equations where all the constant terms are zero. Something like this set of equations, where you have all zeros on the right hand side. As usual, we convert this linear system of equations into the matrix form Ax equals the zero vector. Now hold this thought for a minute and look at these three vectors. Say you are asked to check the linear dependency of these vectors. By definition, you're looking for some constants x, y, and z such that taking the linear combination of these three vectors gives you the zero vector. Now, because of the way we define matrix vector multiplication, it is the same thing as this ax equals zero here. So these two problems are then one and the same thing. In both cases, we are looking for x, y, and z such that the equations become zero. Of course, x equal to y equal to z equal to zero will always work. The system will always have at least this one trivial solution. But we are looking for cases when at least one of x, y, or z turns out to be non-zero. To do this, we take the help of Gaussian elimination. First, we write the given system using an augmented matrix form. We identify the first pivot in the first column and using this, we do these elementary row operations to obtain zeros below the first pivot. Notice that the right hand side, the output vector won't ever change since they are all zeros. The candidate for the next pivot is the element in the second column and the second row. So using this minus four, we make zeros below it. The next pivot needs to be below the previous pivot and to the right of it. But since we don't have any such non-zero number, we stop the process. Now convert back to the system of equations, which gives us x plus y plus 2z equal to 0, minus 4 minus 4z equal to 0, and 0x plus 0y plus 0z equal 0. This last equation is always true, and it gives no valuable information as such, so we discard it. Since we have two equations in three variables, at least one of the variables must be free. We set the variable corresponding to the non-pivot column as the free variable. The first two columns have pivots, the third one does not. So we set z equal to k, where k belongs to r, and solve x and y in terms of the constants. This is the solution set to the problem. In vector notation, we can write the same solution in this way. Now let's take a look at a 3D graph to get an idea of what's going on. To start with, the first equation alone gives me this blue plane that passes through the origin. Next, the second equation would give me this red plane. Notice that these two planes intersect in a line. And now if I add the third plane, it just so happens that this third plane also intersects the other two planes in the exact same line. So the three planes end up having a line of points that are common to them. This is the line spanned by the solution that we obtained algebraically. Let's get back to our blackboard. And now let me take this final echelon form matrix and copy it here. We know that columns one and two have pivots which implies that the original vectors corresponding to these columns are definitely linearly independent. That is vectors one and two are 100% for sure linearly independent. Now I'm not saying vectors one and three cannot be linearly independent. They can be in some cases, but there's no guarantee to it. Also note that all the columns do not have pivots. This implies that all the original vectors taken together are linearly dependent. So if the row echelon form does not have pivots in all the columns, the original set of vectors turns out to be linearly dependent. This is probably the best foolproof method to find out if a set of vectors is linearly independent or not. Let me show this to you graphically as well. These are the three vectors that are given to me. Now if I plot the span of the first two, it will be a plane. And it just so happens that this plane contains the third vector as well. So the three vectors taken together are linearly dependent and they span a two-dimensional space in R3. So the solution we obtained from the row picture, the set of vectors, is called the null space of the coefficient matrix. The coefficient matrix will transform any vector taken from this set to the zero or the null vector. Check this out for yourself. Take k is equal to two, for example. You'll get x equal to minus two, y equal to minus two, and z equal to two. Substitute these values in the original matrix form we saw in the beginning, and you'll find that you do get the zero vector. The dimension of the null space is called the nullity of A. For our example, nullity is 1. And notice that it is also equal to the number of free variables. So to sum this part up, a homogeneous system has all constants as zeros. 
it always has at least one solution that is when all the variables are equal to zero a set of vectors is linearly independent if in the echelon form of the matrix there is a pivot in each and every column the set of solutions for a homogeneous system is called its null space and its dimension is equal to the number of non pivot columns now let's move on to a non homogeneous system the equations are exactly the same except this time i have replaced the zeros with some non zero numbers we carry out the exact same row operations because the coefficient matrix did not change but this time the last equation turns out to be 0x plus 0y plus 0z equal to 9 which is impossible for any value of x y and z so we say that this system has no solution on a 3d graph each of these equations represents a plane notice that none of them will pass through the origin think about why this is true you take any two of these planes they will intersect in a line but there is no common line of intersection for all three of them together so there is no point that is common to all three of them and hence we have no solution now let me take the same set of equations again but change the right hand side with some other numbers we form the augmented matrix and we perform the same row operations again but this time after we reach the echelon form and convert back to the algebraic form we find that the last equation is always true to obtain the general solution let z equal to k where k is any real number and solving for the other two variables in terms of k we get this solution graphically this time we have three planes again but all of them intersect at a common line this entire line of points is the solution to our problem now let's look at the column picture for these two problems i want to find some x y z such that the linear combination of the input vectors equals the output vector the input vectors are the same in the two problems the only difference is of the pink output vector now if the output vector lies in the span of the input vectors we say that a solution exists but if the output vector does not lie in the span of the input vectors no solution exists here's the graphical interpretation the three input vectors span a plane in r3 for the first problem the vector 1 4 9 lies outside this plane so no linear combination of the input vectors will take you to the output however the second output vector 1 2 2 the small purple one does in fact lie in the same plane as the span of the input vectors so in this case we do have a solution in fact we will have infinite solutions now we can ask ourselves that if we are given a set of input vectors for what general output vector b is a solution possible so when is this set of equations with b1 b2 b3 on the right hand side solvable we carry the same old gaussian elimination because once again the coefficient matrix did not change and we reach this final echelon form this time though the last equation says that 0x plus 0y plus 0z is equal to b3 plus b2 minus 4b1 so b3 plus b2 minus 4b1 equals 0 is the condition for the solvability of the system notice that the point 1 2 2 satisfies this condition in fact if you replace the b's with x y and z this is the equation of a plane the same plane that is spanned by the input vectors any time the output vector is a point in this plane you are guaranteed to get a solution anyhow we earlier found that for 1 2 2 the general solution was this vector now i'm going to split this into two separate vectors the first one contains only numbers and second one is a multiple of k the first one is called the particular solution to the problem represented by the vector xp and if you remember a long time ago when this video started we had already solved for this next term the homogeneous solution so the general solution is just the sum of a particular solution and all the homogeneous solutions to quickly find one particular solution put all the free variables equal to 0 in the echelon form graphically let me start with the homogeneous solution it's the same old line through the origin that we saw earlier now if i add my particular solution the vector 3 by 4 1 by 4 0 to this line of homogeneous solutions I'm essentially sweeping all of them across this particular vector. So xp plus xn is this new shifted line, and if I reintroduce the set of planes, you can see that they all intersect at this line. So that's my time, guys. You've been a great audience. Thank you so much. Good night. Have a great weekend. Well, not really. The next video is going to be a detailed analysis of a question from the DSC Economics Entrance Exam, which should further clarify the concepts that I've explained in this one. and after that we will start talking about determinants so we're not just done yet but yes with a couple more videos we will be almost done with the syllabus for the masters entrance exam so stay tuned